and welcome to x-ray review today we're going to look at a radiographic guide to prostate cancer in this video we're going to look at the clinical presentation pathology diagnosis lots of radiographic features and multiple examples of prostate cancer so prostate cancer is the most common primary malignant tumor in men with approximately 200,000 new cases diagnosed each year and it is the second most common cause of cancer related deaths in men and bone is commonly involved in the hematogenous spread of prostate cancer approximately 90 percent so what that means is if prostate cancer spreads approximately 90 percent of the time it's going to go to the bone and that's where x-ray and other diagnostic imaging plays a role the common clinical presentation for prostate cancer are abnormal urinary symptoms like nocturia, hesitancy, urgency, terminal dribble, and in the later stages, hematuria. And if metastasis does occur, back pain, usually in the lower back. So 95% of prostate cancers are adenocarcinomas, and approximately 70% of these are around the posterior peripheral aspect of the prostate gland versus approximately 30% which originate anteriorly. Prostate cancer can spread by direct or local invasion, lymphatic spread, or hematogenously through the blood. And the common sites of hematogenous metastasis are bone and the lung. And that's why it's really important to evaluate the bone when looking for metastasis. So prostate cancer is usually detected by elevated PSA or prostate-specific antigen. Uh, and this is usually abnormal levels over four. And then an abnormal digital rectal exam. So prostate cancer is usually diagnosed through a combination of clinical presentation, abnormal digital rectal exam, elevated PSA, and then a combination of imaging findings. It could be MRI, imaging guided biopsy, transrectal ultrasonography, nuc med, or x-ray and CT. And we're gonna focus on x-ray. So when it comes to the radiographic features of prostate cancer, we're looking for blastic bone mets. Uh, prostate cancer is the most common primary malignancy to cause blastic bone metastasis. So we're looking for solitary or multiple areas of increased bone density. And this sclerosis can occur as discrete nodular appearance, as mottled areas, or it can be larger regions of diffuse increased density. The most common skeletal locations of metastasis from prostate cancer are the spine, the spine, the spine, usually the lower lumbar spine and the pelvis. But the lumbar spine is three times more common than cervical spine. You're not likely to see METs past the, or distal to the elbows or distal to the knees, acral metastasis, uh, and it's not likely to be seen in the skull. Look in the spine and the pelvis. This is a good example of an increase in bone density. And if you compare the L4 vertebral body in relation to the other segments, you can see there's clearly an increase in bone density. This can be referred to as an ivory vertebra, which is often seen with things like Paget's, lymphoma, or plastic mets. Let's look at these x-rays of an individual with diffuse blastic metastasis and focus just on the bone density. As we zoom into the pelvis, you should see patchy areas of increased density, kind of scattered throughout. So let's compare the abnormal bone density with blastic metastasis to an individual with normal bone density. And now you should be able to see those patchy areas of increased density a little bit better. In this example, we can see diffuse plastic metastasis throughout the lumbar spine and pelvis. And again, compare the pelvis side by side and then look at the overall dense homogeneous appearance of the lumbar spine. All right, now let's go through multiple examples of blastic metastasis from prostate cancer on x-ray. This first example is a 67-year-old male who has diffuse skeletal 
blastic metastasis from prostate cancer and you'll notice uh, white spots throughout the visualized bones in the lumbar spine, pelvis, and proximal femurs. This is a 66-year-old male with known prostate cancer presenting with low back pain. And as you look at the overall bone density, compare side by side, and you'll notice there's some big differences looking at the acetabulum being denser, the bone density in the ischial tuberosities, pubic rami, throughout the lumbar spine, this patchy areas of increased density. And this represents diffuse blastic metastasis. This is a 71 year old male with known prostate cancer with metastatic spread into the lumbar spine and pelvis. And you can see multiple areas of increased density seen scattered throughout the pelvis. This is a 60 year old male who presented with low back pain and uh, radiculopathy. And when we zoom in and take a closer look at the pelvis, you should notice some significant asymmetries in the bone density of the acetabulum bilaterally, and maybe some suspect areas uh, in the ilium or sacrum as well. And this patient ended up having prostate cancer and uh, was unknown at the time of this imaging. This is a 58 year old male with a known history of prostate cancer and is being imaged for low back pain. And while the clothing artifacts are a little confusing, there are multiple areas of increased density that are not visible on the contralateral side. And these do represent areas of uh, blastic metastasis. This is a 51 year old male with no known history of prostate cancer. Uh, presented with cervical pain and there is an ivory vertebra at C4 and on further evaluation this patient ended up having prostate cancer and this did represent metastatic spread. This is a 67 year old male with no known history of prostate cancer that actually fell and was being imaged for a possible rib fracture and when you take a look at the bone density of the thoracic spine You should notice multiple ivory vertebra. If you look at the density of these vertebra in relation to these others, uh, there is a significant increase in bone density. And this again ended up being related to prostate cancer. In this example, there are multiple areas of increased density in the pelvis, the sacrum, as well as the L3 vertebral body. And anytime you see this type of distribution and pattern, you have to consider blastic metastasis within your differential. This is another example of a 65 year old male with a known history of prostate cancer. And you'll notice the bone density in the proximal femur is significantly increased. And this does represent metastatic spread. Here's an example of prostate cancer that is spread to the thoracic spine. And as we zoom in, you should see two segments that have a significant increase in bone density in relation to the adjacent segments. And this, of course, represents blastic metastasis. This is a 67 year old male who presented with low back pain and there is evidence of previous decompressive laminectomies, some anterolistheses and degenerative changes. But even without a history, we know this patient has previously had prostate cancer and that's due to the presence of prostate radiation therapy seeds. These radiation seeds are surgically implanted in order to inhibit the adjacent cancerous tumor. So when visible, you know the patient has had uh, previous prostate cancer and skeletal metastasis and a reoccurrence are things to look for. But again, advanced imaging is more helpful than plain film x-ray or CT. Here's another example of implanted uh, prostate radiation seeds. And these other densities are vascular flebless and not to be confused with pathology. 
This is a 40-year-old male with visible calcifications in the expectant area of the prostate. And the prostate's usually going to be seen around the pubic symphysis, usually a little bit lower or overlying it. And prostate calcification is not related to prostate cancer. So if you see calcification of the prostate, that is not related to prostate cancer, um, just so you know. And this is what it looks like on an x-ray. All right, well, thank you for listening. If you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, put them below. And thanks again.